All right, lads, it's now that time of the month once again where I let you know what's going to be coming to the NA version of the game for the month of January. And I'm sorry this is a little bit late. Usually I like to get these done about a week before the month starts. That way, if there's any banners or if there's an event that you need to prepare for, you know, maybe get caught up on, say, like your singularities or lost boat stories so you can actually clear them. I like to make sure that you guys are informed about all that good stuff. But we've had not only the blunders with raids over on NA, but we've also had Lotto and all sorts of stuff on both versions of the game. Game, and we're moving into New Year's, you know, GSSR, got to cover all that stuff. So it's a little bit late, but don't worry. I will still let you know what we're going to be getting or what we should be getting for the month of January. And not surprisingly, it's going to be a lot of banners, mostly like we should be getting an event and we should be getting the implementation of advanced quests over here on NA. But aside from that, it's going to be like not a you know slow month but kind of a slower month unless you really want to hit a lot of these banners the next couple of months should start being a little bit more hype but before we begin if you like being informed on the goings on on both versions of the game make sure you leave a like on the video and you subscribe to the channel but with that being said let's get into this obviously i have pulled up already the new year's event that we have over here on na for 2024 we got some nice stuff that came with this and i do want to skip ahead to another thing over here the grail casting if you were not paying attention you didn't see this in the news maybe you were too focused on the GSSR or you were trying to finish up the Dagunska event or you're you know trying to hit the Koyan Dark banner and you got really shafted on it so you just logged out of the game we did finally get Grail casting to briefly explain this to my players who do not know what this is and why it's pretty gas basically you're going to take any servant coins that you don't need and this is why I say the last Guda Guda event was very popular because you could use the servant coins from the free to play, you know, friend point gotcha servant. You could use that and you could exchange those for the Holy Grail casting. So you could still keep as many as you needed if you wanted to get uh, the, you know, Grail stuff done. If you wanted to do that for Nobukatsu or if you wanted to do his append skills, you know, you could reserve all those. But because you're pulling extra copies because it was just a good time to be pulling on the friend point gotcha, you could use those for Grail casting. But this works for any of your servants. So if you don't want to use, say, Caesar, right? Or you're not going to use your Fergus coins, your Angra Mainu coins. Like if you're not going to grail them past 100, which you need servant coins for, or you're not going to use their append skills or anything like that, you don't think you're going to need that extra 20% battery. You don't think you're really ever going to use them. You can just dump them all into grail casting and get extra grails. Now it is 2000 servant coins, but remember, you probably have a lot of the one, two, and three star servants laying around. So if you're never going to use them, you might as well put them to use and get yourself some extra grails to help you, you know, level up some of your servants to, you know, past 100, right? You know, I know that we have the double and great success, you know, thing kind of going on right now, and it's a good time to be grailing your servants. So if you want to put some of those EXP cards to good use from the lotto, now is a really good time to be doing that. So this is probably the most major, I would say, you know, not like quality of life change, but biggest game update that we're going to be getting over here on NA. Now, to look at some of the other stuff for New Year's over here, make sure you are doing these missions over here. They're not all that hard. Like, this one is just clearing daily missions and to get teapots. That's extra bond, which was very, very nice uh, when we were, you know, doing all of our farming for the raids, I believe. I don't think we had it for Lotto, but I do know we had it for the raids and you know you could get up to like 7,000 plus bond on say the Koi and Sky raid so make sure you grab these and get that nice fat uh, addition to your bond if you're going to be going bond farming or anything or if you just want to use it on the next 90 plus node for the next event that we'll be getting which we'll talk about in a second so make sure you're grabbing these and then make sure you actually do the panel missions if you want to go more in depth here and look at you know all the recommended spots the wiki does help you out with this but you're going to be able to get a grail a lot of these exp cards for you know leveling up your ce's and then you know stuff like faux paws extra quartz you're also going to get the jaguar man command code over here which we'll talk about in a second and also a lore and some tickets to use on any of the banners you know if you want to use them for Kolyan dark by all means go ahead maybe you want to summon for skahawk or tyra who are going to be going up on raid up um alongside Kolyan dark it's just good to grab those or maybe you want to save those for bazette who's going to be coming out rather soon so it's just good to get these missions done don't forget about them right because i know that is a problem that a lot of players will fall into is that they'll either be farming the you know half off dailies for qp or exp cards and they'll forget to kind of come do these things over here make sure you get them done because you'll get some of them done because you see the you know training grounds you know you can finish off some of these but you know those are like random ones where it's like okay i gotta go use a demonic beast servant i gotta go beat a divinity servant that you might not get done so make sure you do those and get your rewards now the jaguar warrior you know command code over here or the jaguar man command code whatever you want to call it uh is not the craziest command code but it's fine i mean even if you don't really care too much about this because this will just be kind of situational removing their np damage buff i mean 
you know, who knows when that'll come up. You know, some bosses will have it, some of them won't. Sometimes it'll be unremovable. You can just almost view this as, okay, I slap this on one of my DPSs and they get an extra 5% critical. So say you use Melusina Rot and you wanted to crit a little bit harder, or say you want to use uh, Morgan a lot like I do and she has that 30% crit. Her crits are nice, but maybe you want that extra little bit of power. You can kind of just slap that on one of her cards if you don't have something better or you know, say you've already given all of your really good command codes to a lot of your stronger servants. This is one you can just chuck on one of, you know, like your tier three, you know, DPSs that you're going to be using. It's just a nice little buff to get for them. And then finally, there's GSSR. I'm assuming most of you guys have already done this. If you need a guide for the GSSR, I put one out about like two weeks ago because I really knew that people wanted to get planning for this one because it's a little bit awkward again not to go over this again because i was like a 20 minute video or something but i do think if you're just a newer player this is probably one of the better ones to hit because walking around with essentially waiver two or castoria the best unit in the game is going to be very nice but then also getting one of these three can just be good to help you out in difficult content you know chi chi huang being able to solo most things and then van gogh just being absolutely hilarious to use uh, miss crane is also very strong but if your account is a bit newer getting her can kind of be a shaft because she's not really a new account type servant she's more like okay i can start plugging in guys all over the place and i can use her for a bunch of crazy team comps and whatnot that's when she starts to get a little bit better as your account gets stronger but realistically just go after a banner that you think you know has a lot of the servants that you're going to be wanting or if it has some servants you already have make sure you're okay with getting them at like np2 i'm going to be rolling on this one probably tomorrow or i guess as I'm recording this, it'll be today as this video goes live uh, at 6 p.m. EST when I'll be doing my GSSR summons and everything. So if you want to see me do that live, uh, I will be probably going on this one. Unless, I don't know, I just have some last minute, you know, change of heart or something. But it'll probably be this one. I'm pretty content with that. But uh if some of you guys are wondering you know where's the koyan light banner you know she's supposed to be going on right up as well well if you would like to save your sand quartz as soon as this banner goes down we should be getting this as this one started on the 10th where this one went up whoop, there it is as this one went up on the 31st slash the first so expect once this goes down the other koyan's guy is going to make her appearance if you do not have her uh, I would highly recommend going for this servant. You know, no duh. She is pretty much the premier buster support unit in the game. She functions in CQs kind of like Caster Scotty does, but a lot more modern where you really do want to beat down the boss and say like three turns or, you know, less. But because she does refund you your skills, you get a little bit of that extra extension. So it's more like you got four or five turns because you're going to loop back all of your skills and everything because of her battery skill. So she's very strong for that. But then obviously the main thing that everybody cares about is that she enables you to do buster looping which you know it's just you refunding your battery and firing it numerous times she's very good for that it's going to be very nice and strong for when we start getting the 90 plus plus content in about six months from now because that's going to be very annoying if you're a newer player and you don't know what the 90 plus plus content is you don't know what all the hubbub is about well essentially 90 plus plus content is the strange nodes like 90 plus except the end usually has a boss that's anywhere from like 800 to like 1.1 million hp so you really want to be using your stronger teams you know finding your like your power mods against the guy or just blowing them up with oberon and to use you know oberon effectively you really want to have either you know castoria with like the black rail setups especially if you don't have power mod or just kind of using your normal buster setups where you just nuke them into oblivion so getting clean sky is very strong if you do not have her i would recommend skipping this one to make sure you get this one unless you really want to gamble it try to snag yourself some copies of this uh Koyan sky and then hope you have enough to grab this Koyan sky but let me tell you she is a cruel mistress the only servant i've ever heard yeah hit pity on so just be careful on that one the next event we should be getting is shortly after that we should be getting the lady reigns case file rerun it's essentially just the same as the original lady reigns case file event you know you have your missions and all that the main appeal i think is that hafeiston is going to get introduced with this event as it is the rerun um, and she's going up on raid up with rain so if you want to go for hafeiston obviously i'll put out a video you know talking about her when she does come out but hafeiston is a very very strong what i would call a good generic unit and not meaning that she's you know your walmart brand off brand cereal right she's nothing like that it's just her kit isn't really specifically tailored to be really good against specific enemies aside from maybe casters as she does give herself power mod against casters which is nice as she is a pretender and she doesn't really you know she's not very effective against them normally so she kind of gets to hit four classes instead of just three as a pretender which is nice but she has a big battery just standard good buffs has a taunt lowers enemies you know like uh, arts and buster resistance so each np is going to do more and more damage very strong as a 90 plus looper as well because you know you can just fire her battery and because she's a pretender she'll be good 
into three classes plus the one that she has power mod against with the casters and then you might also be able to grab reigns who is essentially just waiver 2.0 except instead of being more offensively based she's more defensively based and is a very very strong unit if you want to bring her to you know, cq style content or she's just another chen gong bullet however you want to look at it with that but speaking of waiver he's also going to be going on raid up so if you didn't pick up Waver for free as your free five star, you could try to get him right now. Waver is just always nice to have in general, just good generic, you know, attack buff, defense buff, crit buff, stuff that every team would want. Gives you 50% NP total to one ally, 20% to the party. He can also drain the enemy's NP. He can stun them, lower their defense. He's just doing good stuff that you could put in any team comp and it's still pretty good to this day. He's just a nice generic good support. And then he's going to be on raid up with Estrella, who is an insane arts like crit servant which you know normally you know that's supposed to be quick's thing but astraea just gens so many stars that she just is like you know what i'm basically an honorary quick unit at this point so really good decent damage with also having a very strong crit need. so if you want to go summon for either one of these guys by all means go for it i'll go over this event in detail more when we get closer to it i'll put a proper event guide out there but it's just a nice standard event you know it's nothing too insanely difficult along those lines just make sure you get your missions done prepare to you know kind of play this with your natural ap i know a lot of us are in an apple deficit because of the raids and the lotter that we just got so make sure especially if you're like me and you only got like five gold apples to your name that you are using your natural ap every single day to do as much as you possibly can really wish we would have gotten blue apples because i would just use all of those and save my ap for this whenever this drops but you know it's whatever you know we got the grail casting we'll take what we can get and then finally there's advanced quests and we start off with a fairly easy one now if you don't really care about all the details you can just bring like a berserker that's an aoe and probably one to two shot this even if your box isn't super great but you're going to be fighting against ku proto saber lily and then you're going to be fighting against robin hood and they all have these little buffs that basically make them even better against who they're super effective against and more tanky against who they're already taking against so for example saber's going to do bonus damage against your lancers so her type like you know advantage is even better and she's going to be more tanky against them as well which is why you can bring a pretender you can bring a berserker just anyone that you think is just going to be good in going against these guys but they don't have break bars or anything they're just like 500k they're decently bulky and they have these uh neat little on death effects so if you take out robin hood he's going to make everybody crit harder if you take out Ku, they're going to get a buffed crit chance and then if you take out artoria over here she's going to give everybody big attack but realistically you can kind of just blitz through them and take them out it's not that big of a deal and then these aren't anything like super special these are just their normal skills and do remember that these two guys the coup has the triple dodge and that robin hood has a normal dodge but she doesn't have any survivability so you can just kind of nuke her and take her out so that's really it for all these guys i guess also maybe watch out that if you get to the point where coup fires gay bolg he does have a death chance on that so keep in mind but it is well worth it because you're going to get this ce over here that i have dubbed the farming update because it makes the drop rates for you know various materials stronger so for this one you're going to get a five percent bonus for dust but we'll start getting them for bones fangs hero proofs you know you can get them for literally anything they're starting to expand on this more on jp we have i think about 13 14 i want to say or maybe we're up to 17 we have quite a few up to the point where you can maximum break the bone one i believe to make it a 25 percent one so instead of bringing five of the ce you can just make them you know all one where it's 25 percent, and then you know it's, it's just a lot more convenient that way you're not wasting your team cost on a bunch of these like random ce's and they do help they help out a lot i needed 30 bones for the koi and dark video because i got her on my gssr and uh, I was like, oh man, I really don't want to farm all these bones, but this made it a lot easier. It went from something that might've taken me a couple hours to really just being dead in under like an hour and a half, somewhere along those lines. So these are very good. Make sure you keep up with these because we'll start to get more and more of them, especially this year. And it can get very overwhelming if you just let them sit there. Don't worry. I'll try to put out guides for these as they come out. And when we do get this one released, I'll just probably do a clear using like a semi-normal team but that's about it for the month of january you know a lot of the you know hype is concentrated around new year but we're kind of winding down a little bit you know we got the insane lotto we got the insane raids even if we missed out on one of them and now it's going to be a little bit more calm you know we have the case files is very cool with hafeiston coming out the waiver plus reigns banner is very strong as well if you want to pick up some extra supports and then koyan light is obviously just very nice when she comes back around but other than that let me know which banner you're going to be looking forward to the most in the comments down below and again if you want to see me do my gssr i will be doing that later on stream the twitch link is in the description down below but with that being said i will catch you guys in the next one peace late guys